Wait, what? I can do that? This is Eric Bell with Wait, What? Financial matters that matter for business and the people that own them. Welcome to this episode of Wait, What? I'm fortunate today to have David Coffs with me and Brooke Wainwright. They're realtors, but they do something unique. And I kind of want to talk about that. A lot of us are in our late 50s, 60s, and our parents are becoming 80, 90, and plus. And we're having trouble, some of the business owners, in terms of I'm going to work, but my mom's having problems. Dad passed away, and mom's having to live in a house where she's only using maybe three rooms out of a seven-bedroom house or five-bedroom house. She needs to move out, but she's had some challenges. There's so much stuff. There's repairs that need to be done. There's things that need to be done over and beyond just selling the house. And that's where David and Brooke come in. You know, Brooke has a background. She worked with her her grandmother when she was only 17, took care of her. She has a way about her, a certain amount of patience in terms of working with, you know, special needs, kids, things of that sort throughout her background before she got into real estate. So she has a way about her. And David has been known in real estate for many, many years, probably too many, huh, David? <laughs> anyway, David knows uh, real estate like the back of his hand, but the two of them make a great team. And I kind of just want to talk about how they help possibly a business owner who's trying to run his business, but also has aging parents and needs to help them. So he they don't have to he doesn't have to focus on dealing with his parents. He can let these two do it. Welcome to the show, Brooke and David. Thank you. Thank you very much, Eric. You no, know, can you just talk towards that subject, both of you? And tell me sure. exactly how that uh, works, and you know, kind of to give you an idea. Going back in retrospect, I've been doing this about thirty years, and we had to figure a way to differentiate our service. What do we do different than uh, another realtor that puts a sign in the front, puts the property in the MLS, maybe makes a flyer, maybe does some open house, and we're both trying to examine you know what voids are there. I started. Fortunately, about 15 years ago with a big attorney in Orange County, he had me sell a home for a woman and sell to her. And she had died of cancer for the work I did of keeping the her two sons separated, the good and the evil. I was written into the trust to sell that asset. And part of it was an experience of learning all over again. And what Brooke and I do jump in is We will help somebody deal with a lot of either legal issues, incapacitated people, people that perhaps need a single level home. Right now, they could be split level, three level. They can't do it and they still want to enjoy the lifestyle. So part of what we do is we will help them first with the move out. Any cleanup. And and a lot of it also is um, if someone is nearing their end of days and need medical care or need to go into a nursing facility, but their money is running out and the only asset they have left is their home. We help them uh, choose a care facility, help them into a place such as Laguna Woods or along the likes, and we will help them with the entire clean up, clean out, pack up, any immediate repairs that need doing to the home for immediate resale value. We will Front the money on any repairs that need doing on the home. We work as a mastermind alliance. What we'll do is there is so much going on when somebody has mental, emotional, physical problems, wealth problems that we get in to help sort it out. As I said, and Brooke said, we will first assist with the move out. Where are they going to go next? Perhaps they're going to need to go to a place with more care or home care. And we can give them with a home care professional guidance. We're members of the Pacific Fiduciary Group in California. We're active members. So we can come with a list of who they need. They need wealth management of somebody to run the money they have. It hasn't been done well. They're the sole one. We have that. What we will do with them is help them first with the move out, where they're going to go next, where they need to go next. Level of care against level of income area if there's somebody local to help. And once we get that done, then we do the clean out of the property. Sometimes we're dealing with, we had one in Fullerton that was from 1879 and we brought in estate sale people. Then that became, they had their own list and they split the proceeds. We get none of that. Then it boils down to garage sale and or 
or haul away into the dump or charitable donations. So we do all of that. And then we went forward with repairs. There was a tree root growing over the walkway that we had trip removed and, and fixed the trip hazard. And we uh, had a, a bee's nest removed <laughs> yeah. from the, the chimney. Yeah. We'd go above and beyond and... Well, and the thing is, we one thing we do I have a background. My degree is structural engineering, and um, many many years ago, and so I can go into a property and we can see the best and most reasonable way to make it pop for resale. Right. So we'll bring in. We both of us keep up a list in our office. We have over a hundred agents. We monitor the blackboard. That let's just say of a tradesman, if he is a painter, we. Give his name out. If he did well, he's endorsed. If he didn't show up, he showed up late, he didn't do a good job, he's off the list. So we have this list. It's also a great resource for any of the fiduciaries, the attorneys, the wealth management people that they will call and they'll say, Brooke, my grandfather's house, you know, Corona Del Mar, it really needs a coat of paint and it needs trees Do and we'll email them the list. And that's what I, th- I found really amazing because, you know, the business owner is trying to run his business, but you can't ignore your parents. And for you guys to front the money to take care of some of these repairs, if the owner of the house doesn't have it, not the business owner, but the owner of the house mm-hmm. doesn't have it, for you to front the money and recoup that at the sale, that's, that's amazing to me. And I saw your list of, uh, tradesman it was you know it's two pages it's you very, got it from a to z it's very fluid uh the list we gave you eric maybe two months ago would not be entirely valid we tell everybody call us first email us a guy that might have been an incredible roofer uh with us for years we have one now in three arch bay where they did a lousy job it they got them in a hurry three weeks to do a two-day job and it's um they took all the roof apart so nobody else would get the job and they left. Yeah, and wow. that's a bad So they put dibs on it. We get that with painters. A lot of people, that's maybe why they stay small contractors. But then for us to enforce it, they just don't get future business and yeah. the phone doesn't ring for them. But part of it, then we can sort this out. If you have, say, your mom is in a home and she needs to go to assisted care or maybe just a single level or a smaller property. All these things looming, who do you call? Is Yelp a good source? Not always. The neighbors, maybe not always. The best is from endorsement of people we use actively. And it's a big part of our business. And we don't derive $1 from recommending any of these people. It's direct. And if we're dealing with, say, a, a law group, a fiduciary, wealth manager, everything goes through there for them to approve it. And our goal in the end of the day is to make our client and whoever brings us in, whether it's our, the parents of somebody, the kids, the fatern, the legal firm that might be a fiduciary, we want them to look good to their client. So they can say, besides doing all your legal paperwork, setting up a trust, clearing the will and that or a probate, I can do all these for you with my staff and we become that staff. You know, there were eight points on a a sheet of paper that you gave me months ago. I was wondering if you can kind of touch on some of those. Well, we definitely go into a home and help offer uh, a correct and current market value. David did start out as an appraiser, so we are able to really correctly pull up a all of the comps and do our homework on square footage on um, by comparison or Mm -hmm. and give them a really good comparative market analysis and make sure that we are spot on on a home price and we uh, on the legal side we hire a transaction coordinator that helps us with all of our paperwork makes sure that our i's are dotted and our t's are crossed it and keeps everyone on schedule with the transaction sure. coordinator nowadays it's basically the job of say a paralegal what they do is make sure everybody kind of comes to the finish line on time in a transaction at close of escrow there's certain contingency periods time periods if we'll do this when this is done mm-hmm. They make sure that it keeps going. They'll let us know. They'll say, Brooke, if you're going over, we have a triplex, a probate we're doing right now in Santa Ana. And she said, we're not getting the rental estoppels. We're not getting this. Make sure you, and it keeps everyone accurate. And we treat that for our clients, which is about up to $450. It's part of our service. Yeah, absolutely. She keeps us on our timeline and it's really nice security to have. You know, I know, I know a lot of our parents, they've they've just got so much stuff over the years. And you guys helping in that cleanup 
you know, well, and, and they haven't upgraded anything. It's, you know, still got the 1970 or even 60s look. It is. Yeah. We're yeah. going to be doing a home in uh, Placentia by Cal State Fullerton. It's original from 1962, the kitchen. Part of what we'll do is make a call or analysis saying if we're selling this, if we fix it up and say put 20 grand into it, is it going to bring 20 grand back? It's right. not worth it. Either way, we'll have it cleaned. If it needs interior painting, landscaping, given, clean out. Broken windows replaced or garage door that doesn't work. We do that immediate stuff. A lot of the older homes that where it doesn't really make sense to put a lot of money into it for remodeling, we do sell uh, kind of on an as-is basis to where we get a lot of action from the investors and the families that are looking for a home that they would like to put their personal touches on. So we it, we have a lot of success. Yeah. With- over the years, I've kept a list and we keep updating of what we call our fixers. And these are people that will go the finish line, generally all cash. It is a fair value against putting work into it. If there is going to be a margin of, say, 20% we left on the table, no, we'll sell to the end user. So we evaluate that. We've done very good with them over the years that they can look at something and perhaps do it for less, but it makes an immediate sale too, and they're qualified. So we, anybody we bring in, let's say we're selling your mom's house, we're going to do proof of funds. We also need to have proof of a pre-approval from a noted lender, somebody we recognize, or we'll send them through one of ours we've dealt with under no obligation, but they're going to say they're good to go. Mm -hmm. That way we know three weeks from now, everyone's moving forward to get mom at Leisure World, Laguna Woods, wherever it'll be done. Right. And we try to remove the contingencies early on that so we don't have the issues. Standard contingencies in California on a purchase are 17 or 21 days. I feel if everyone's moving forward, two weeks is fair. Get yeah. your appraisal, get your inspection done. If there's any reason longer, there isn't a reason. If everybody's complying and pulling the same way, so part of the process is keeping all those loose ends together too. If it does fall out, and we've had that for multitude of reasons, we're ready to go. And we always still bring in backup offers. I never want the buyer to think they're the only game in town. So we actively solicit for somebody else if it's going to be good for one on a property if it's that good of a deal it should be good for three or four you know i use my mom as an example my dad passed away my mom's still here she's in her 80s and she still has my boy scout badges she still has probably my <laughs> track cleats when i was in high school she has football cleats and things of that sort she kept everything how, everything what do we do so well, how do you work with them i'll tell you an idea on that if we can get a relative a guardian a conservator who is local very important because we don't know What the aesthetic value is or sentimental value, we can't place scouting, all that. Absolutely. We would look and think, what? Old camping stuff. What I've done, we had one in Villa Park I did about three years ago, and uh, all the relatives were in Ohio. Great house. We had everything shipped to a storage facility, and they had it prepaid for one year legally then. We did it. They can go in there at their leisure when they come out here and sort it. You don't want to be the one responsible for losing memories or picking right. which ones. That's good to know. It is. And there are some things that just, uh, you make a call, let's say in kitchen, old appliances and that they're not worth storing, moving. They're just better to, we like to donate to the Marine base. And mm-hmm. one of the big things out here is at the Camp Pendleton in our family are three generations of Marines. So that's why it's a nice soft spot when they're deployed you generally have averages a wife that's about 23 to 26 and has two kids that can't afford to get a babysitter or she can't afford to work. So they put them in base housing, which for the most part, cinder block housing. They're cinder block dormitories with nothing and it's very cold and impersonal and they don't have the means to go buy themselves kitchenwares and nice dishes and little knickknacks and side tables and coffee tables. So So what we do is we will donate to the Marine base and we pay for the pickup and delivery from the Marine base out of our own. So mm-hmm. it's charity. The Marines will have, they have their own thrift store, which is self running. 
And what they do with this resource, the money keeps spending for all these families. The really good high-end items that are donated, we sold a house for a retired airline captain in Turtle Rock, and he wanted to do a garage sale. We told him it was a better write-off for that itemized that give it to the Marine base. The high-end sold through their thrift store. The normal things like pots, pans, towels, blankets, all that any furniture lower end went to all these families. They cherish it. Mm -hmm. So everybody wins. Now, where did he end up moving to? Uh, To uh, kind of a Laguna Woods type housing. He needed a single level. Senior citizen? Yes. Yeah, he was uh, 81 years old. Okay. And he just realized that he needed help. So this, our service for him was wonderful all the way around. We're st- we still are good friends with most of the people. My wife keeps telling me we inherit all these people to become friends. And uh, You know, it just seems like for the older person, it's just overwhelming to think, how am I going to get this done? And then, you know, the business owner, be it a um, son or daughter, having to deal with their parent because their parents, our parents always see us as five years old. So having to deal with our parents, oh, it's it's, 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 it's it's a hard thing to do. I'd rather have Brooke deal with them or you deal with them. Right. You know? Well, in, yeah. in fact, it is, as I said, it's an extension of your capabilities that you're saying, wow, this is overwhelming. They do need to move because they're not ambulatory. Mm-hmm. I need to have them near perhaps Saddleback Hospital because they go in three mornings a week or they do dialysis. So we'll look at the demographics. What is going to be best for them? What is their budget? What will come out of the house? And again, that's normally working with, say, a fiduciary or a wealth manager that says, I've been entrusted with the folks. David, they can do this. Here's the budget. What Create life for me. And also moving their contents out, we'll ask them what's the most important things. We have one now, a gentleman, he's ex-Army, and he's in his 80s. His typical case, this just came up. We were brought in from an attorney group. He had a massive stroke. They don't know if he's going to make it. He lives upstairs in a condo. His son is 55 and is autistic. So we're brought in to make, find out, and it'll be on a wide spectrum of what can we do to help. Obviously, they need to sell the house because he can't get upstairs anymore. He needs single level with care, which is a retirement community, wherever it may be, wherever he decides. His nearest relative in charge is in Regina, Saskatchewan, Canada. Wow. So she, Joni's relying on us. And I said, we've got it and show letters. We have enough yeah. Letters of recommendation, but I said, what about your brother? The brother uh, is kind of self-supporting, but he eats out every meal. He'll walk to the gym. He will not help the father, but he needs a place to stay. So the list keeps getting more and more refined. The one thing is the father has rooms that are walls of books that he cherishes. What do you do with them? The idea is then you're going to put them, if they will fit at the new place as much as you can, if not pay for storage to go through them bit by bit so he knows they're there. Yeah. So we've been enlisted to come in and come up with a price for the home that they're currently in and see if that's enough to fund them maybe a leased property for a year or two while the dad is still able and a single level place where both the special needs brother and the dad can be together and room enough to fit the dad's things and place that will accommodate all of their needs at once. They're close to medical care. They're close to the gym facility that the mm-hmm. brother requires. They're close to the food cafeterias. There are services that deliver to them there. Free bus service. Yeah. Bus. So kind of, it's, it's really... Kind of an idea too, though. This is not always just for people that are having a hard time financially. Two years ago, we did a sale that was seven point six million, mm-hmm. and it was a gentleman who's eighty-one who died without a trust. He had a will, and he owned a two-lot property on the beach by the pier in, gosh, Seal Beach, down the street from it. He owned a triplex on the beach. Then he also owned a beauty parlor on Main Street. Then he also owned a duplex. It kept growing and growing, and the idea was the attorney that brought me in. Sort of, I'll share a. Funny, interesting story, but he said, would you want to help an old gentleman passed away? He's from Italy and um, he's got a place in Long Beach. And I said, sure, because we never know. We've had ones where they told us it's a half acre with hickory trees, ranch style. And I figured this would be about a million dollars. It's in the central San Bernardino. And I think it went for 175 grand. And on this, I said, sure. I interviewed and um, his beneficiary was first his sister, who's a retired nun, who is 80. 
and then their nieces and nephews. And as we got together, it just kept growing and growing. And I asked the property and they told me, and I used to ride my bike there at the home of the cow. The house in terrible shapes worth four and a half million. We sold it all cash in three days by promoting it. They won thing we should get into is not just what we're doing here, but on the marketing. Our marketing must work since 2003. I've been with two of the biggest companies in Orange County, and I've always been a top through 3% agent continually. And it's by adding this service. I mean, it's not just for people that can't afford it. The ones that can really afford it still appreciate it and need the help. I think it's a huge differentiator that you guys bring to the table. You know, it's like, when do you have time to sell real estate? Yeah, well, (laughs) we're seven days a week. Thanks. This one in Seal Beach was funny that this gentleman, you learn tricks of the trade. This gentleman collected old Bibles and religious artifacts from the 17th century up. He's Italian. And I told them that from knowing that people will find money in a house, if you don't know if they don't have a safe or a safe box, and it's indicative of kind of what they like. He liked religious manuscripts. And I said, you're going to find money in old Bibles or travel books. Younger people, unfortunately, passed away. It's usually Sports Illustrated. We found in that house $11,000 in the old Bibles just by turning them upside down and shaking them. Wow. Archive uh, money in books. It's somewhere no one's ever going to think well, to. Monopoly rob board. You. We did a house in Garden Grove, a probate, and there was $1,300 in the bottom of Monopoly board of like ones and fives that I guess they tried to play it real. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. uh, so you watch when we empty, I'll tell the gang if you're going to have everyone down, make it kind of a social thing and empty things out as you're going. It takes a minute and it's incredible what you will find. And we've, uh, we've also dealt with some really yucky homes from hoarder situations to, you oh know, yeah. hazardous zones. We've walked into a home where you were walking through a, a tunnel of uh, waist high stacks of magazines. They were moldy. Moldy. And you're walking on about <laughs> two feet of old newspapers. Wow. And we're having to walk through with pretty much hazmat outfits on and mm-hmm. and help them arrange, you know, the the clean out junk guys well, for that. And then there's the people that want to go through every single yeah, item of that home. Saying, they didn't all, the lady was in her 90s that was the owner and she was legally blind, but they're spending 10 grand a month to give her a care facility with a full on ocean, ocean view in Newport view Beach. For a, a blind woman. So I suggested to her, a uh, lady who's her caretaker who's in her mid 80s. We could probably recommend a couple places or get a caregiver to recommend Costa Mesa. You'll save 5000 a month mm-hmm. for identical care. Mm-hmm. She wouldn't do it. Um, the property she wanted to go through every stick of anything over a period of about six months with us sitting there to see what was valuable. And the clean out company. And we told her it would be way too expensive so, for the clean out company to have four guys through here unloading and showing you every single item. So there are occasional deals we will pass by. Right. That one's still sitting. Okay. And if if it's not there, most of the people are not all logical when these things happen, especially the heirs, the caretakers, some want to know how much can we do? How quick can we do it? How little will we take? Mm -hmm. And we try to show them of adding value. Our cost is no different than a standard realtor of doing a job. And if we do both sides or we have brought in the buyer, we even reduce it further. So everybody benefits, right? Exactly. Some of the ones I said were funny stories. The one in Seal Beach, the gentleman at this whole estate was over $17 million. 1966, he was a priest. He had a mental breakdown at about age 23 and he left. And the parish loved him in Corona del Mar, a lot of firefighters. They got him a double lot to take over on Balboa Island. It had a 60-foot long dock. Everything was falling into the water. It should have been scraped. They spent three years restoring it. And he came to his wits, all better. He became a realtor. He sold it, made a zillion dollars and started, which I won't name, but a big real estate company in Seal Beach, California. And he kept going and going and going, but thought he'd live forever. They took his car away. And so he had a Vespa, (laughs) but he couldn't remember where it was all the time. So he passed and I had to interview. And part of it was in relationship building. They had me meet at uh, the daughter's, the niece's home in Naples Island here. 
And it was very nerve wracking because when I learned that it's about, you know, up to $17 million, it's a lot of business. Mm -hmm. What we do and with a team, it couldn't be one person, which worked fine for us because we have three or four as we need them too. But I asked who was involved on the interviewing and the nun asked why. And I said, because I, most of us all started 30 years ago in the same area here by the same big companies that had good education at the time. The, C21, Remax, et cetera. And I just told them that it boils down to it's a relationship. We're going to be working so close over the next maybe even two years, day and night of opinions, adding it has to have a lot of trust involved. And that's who you pick, who you're going to work with. And she was very stern and she said, anything else? And I said, yeah. I said, uh, well, last word on us, do you guys like me? And they're all looking at each other and she says, yes, shakes my hand, she goes, you're it. We're not interviewing anymore. And I, was, I wouldn't say shocked, but I was elated. And in doing this, we found them, as I said, almost $13,000 in books. I arranged sales. We had, he had very high-end antiques. We went through Butterfield and Butterfield. And we even found in the garage, buried in stuff, uh, old MGTD from about 1952, brilliant condition other than the rubber. And she said, of course, you can sell this for us, right? <laughs> of course. She says, what are you going to do? I got through Hemmings Motor News, found Beverly Hills Motor Car, and another one of LA British Motors. They bid, they did a wire transfer. And it's kind of fun as we grow doing this. Yeah, uh, we have one similar now, the one in Placentia that we found a very nice conditioned Mustang in the garage that's buried under all this stuff. And we're Kind of look at each other with eyes big and like, wow, what do we do with this? All right, we got this. And yep, yeah. yeah. And you know, the charitable giving, you're also trying to do as much as you can for them. If you can bring down the cost of all they're moving in that, we do that. And we also keep everything on a thumb drive or a CD. So at the close of escrow, all the emails, everyone is in such litigation and society now that they can always refer back on their own saying this was done, that was done, contingency period. You never just plug it in and you have the entire... All of their paperwork and all of their disclosures. Normally, I wouldn't have a realtor on, but you guys provide such a, uh, to me, different service. When I think about what you do, you know, you assist in the clean up and clean out the charitable donation thing we just talked about in terms of cars or books mm -hmm. that might be around, the cleanup of the interior and the exterior, because a lot of the parents just have not taken care of their homes over time, repairs and minor upgrades that you do, the property analysis that you talked about, Brooke, in terms of making sure you price the property properly, the property marketing, I mean, a key thing, Oh, I to person, personalized assistance, and also the warranties that you put behind the work that's been done. I think that's tremendous. And when I think about the average business owner that's running his business, he just can't do all this stuff. So it'd be good to find someone like you. And I don't know anyone else but you guys that do this kind Thank of you. stuff. So it'd be... Uh, I think you guys provide a, a tremendous service. Thank Go ahead, you. David, you're going to say something. I'm sorry I was going to say you. on the marketing, we will bring in, we have a photographer that does all the high-end work in Laguna Beach. If we're selling a home that is half a million, which unfortunately out here now is a starter home, we use the same photography. Mm -hmm. We use a drone if necessary. We highlight where we'll show what schools are nearby, how the neighborhood's rated for crime, which we can get through a title company we work with. But that way, when we're in there, it's going to make that home stand out. Even a home that is in terrible shape, you're going to get the overview of the neighborhood, all angles of the home, the entry point. The schools nearby, uh, any parks or amenities. Photography is spot on because nowadays in this, nobody really reads the newspaper. They're going right to the internet when they're looking for their home. They know kind of what they want right off. And then in the end, they'll find a realtor generally or work with one doing this, which is wonderful. If you see one of ours listed, it could be one in Chino. It could be Lake Elsinore. It could be Downey. And Ocean it's all really crisp photography, which is important. It's not cheap. We do it. So I know you primarily work in Southern California, but you've also worked on opportunities throughout California. Oh, thank you. What we've done is we're part of a relocation network that we pay to be in. And in the last, say, 18 months, we've done somebody, our, it was my third sale. The woman stayed with me for 15 years every time she wanted to move around Orange County. She moved to Boise, Idaho. We found her movers. We also found the realtor for her that fit her vibe and personality up north. We had a retired doctor, Mark Doyle in San Clemente, who it's his second home I've done. He moved back where he grew up to Providence, Rhode Island, found him a realtor. 
We did. just relocated one from San Juan Capistrano to Jackson Hole, Wyoming. We've done two to Nashville and uh, yeah, uh, Franklin, Tennessee. We had uh, three coming from here going to Arizona, which is a very okay. popular way now. And we'll interview. We had one uh, literally in my track where I live in San Juan Capistrano. And the brother had passed away and she asked me if I could do help her on her sale. And I said, you know, I didn't want to lose him as neighbors. I thought that's what she's saying. And she says, no, my brother passed on and I need your help. I said, I'll do it. Where is it? She goes, oh, it's Grand Rapids, Michigan. I said, it's a little far to do open house. Right. <laughs> and she just said, I am not very trusting. I need someone that's going to go back there, do what you do. I ended up, we interviewed, tried to interview four. And the oddest thing of handing somebody a deal said, you want to make some money to sell this house? Four calls. We had only two call back. And one just never seemed to be that interested the other one, it was just such a quirk of fate. She goes, what road? And I told her it's like three mile road west. And she goes, I'm on it. I go to work this way. What's the number? And I told her, she goes, I just passed it. She did the deal. And I asked what a home there would go for. She says, I know the track. She was three bedroom, two bathroom for an RV and a boat. She goes, about a third of an acre flat. She goes, it's 37,000. <laughs> wow. So what? She goes, it's not a good economy here. I said, do me a favor. She goes, do you want a yeah. referral? I go, do you want your 20% yeah, referral I said, No, fee? I said, we, no, you do you me a favor. And, and when Linda comes out, take her to lunch or dinner, you know, a sweet lady. And she goes, that's done. Got it. And they did what we did. I said, here's what we do. I need you to do the same because the guy collected old Beatles memorabilia. And I said, this is so important to her, his sister, the one who's alive. Help me. This issue is done. So that's we hold hands to the end. After a property is closed, we will stay in touch with them to make sure everything is going straight, what needs to be done, because they all will have a home warranty. That way, if something's out, we'll educate them on what's needed so it never comes back. We still get calls all of the time. My washing machine isn't working. The sink's plugged. Just bad when they call at midnight. <laughs> yeah. And so we guide them into, hey, this is why we made sure that your home came with a warranty. You call them and you have them come out. There's a one-time service $75. fee. Yeah, a $75 service fee. And they either fix it as much as they can. If they can't fix it, they replace it. And it's a wonderful warranty. Good that, for all. And the yeah. other thing that's nice is when we sell someone's home that's basically incapacitated, we're helping them through all this. The home is sold as is, where is, in its current present condition. It's what we put on the contract. Please bring in inspectors, advisors, whatever you need to do, because we don't know. And obviously the homeowner might not know things, if the plumbing was changed, if it's compliant, whatever. So if we put a home warranty on it, then if something goes bad later, we didn't know and you're covered. Well, I appreciate you both coming in. Any final thoughts from you, Brooke? Um, I just appreciate you having us. It's right. been great to come and Me kind too. of spread what we do and what sets us apart from the average realtor. Okay. To get hold of David and Brooke, please email me at eb at weight-what.biz, or you can always call me at 714 area code 643-2500, and my extension is 420. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Eric. Thank you.